morning. The verse before Mr. Mark's lesson today is from Psalms 57, verses 1 through 3. That's Psalms 57, verses 1 through 3. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee, yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge, until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Salah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Good morning, everyone. I want to remind everybody, I was handed a reminder that there's going to be a financial update next Sunday regarding the uh, Be the Tree program, and we're going to get caught up to date on how things are going with that. And so uh, I, I believe that'll be at the opening of the service uh, before, before we begin next week. So uh, go ahead and uh, be prepared for that. I'm so glad to be here today. You know, this is uh, traditionally the, the week of the triumphal entry. It's traditionally the, the week before our Savior gave his life. And we want to talk about a few things related to that this morning. Because our life is filled with highs and lows. We have our ups and we have our downs. And the disciples of Jesus that very week experienced the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And how did Jesus respond to them in that regard? That's what we want to look at this morning. Would you please pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We thank you for loving us. And we thank you for the blessings that we have in this life. And Father, we acknowledge that sometimes our hearts are troubled from circumstances of our control and beyond our control. And we plead with you to come and save us. We plead with you to help us. And we pray, Father, as we look into your word, that you would encourage us and that you would lift us up and help us to see you for who you truly are. It's through Jesus we pray. Amen. As we are doing, we are talking about, uh, through this year, lessons related to the devotionals from our devotional guide. And this week it was number four. Again, I mentioned to you that I wasn't going to take all of them in order. And this week is number four. Our sister Kay Fishbeck uh, wrote the devotional upon which uh, we're going to uh, reflect and expand the thoughts. And in her devotional... She chose John 14, 1 through 6, which begins, let not your heart be troubled. And because we are a multiple group of people and we're all in different places, the lesson today is let not your hearts be troubled. Life can be troubling, can it? Again, circumstances in our control and circumstances beyond our control can cause many difficulties in our lives. In 1 Samuel chapter 22, we will read about some difficulties that David experienced that were beyond his control. Previous in chapter 21, verse 10, then David arose and fled that day from before Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. He was fleeing from Saul because Saul was seeking his life on multiple occasions. At the beginning of chapter 22 in 1 Samuel, we read, David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. He escaped to a cave. And you know, there are a lot of times that we find ourselves in a cave. Our hearts get troubled, and we try to find a cave to go escape to, to withdraw ourselves from what is happening in this life. We find a place, and you know, sometimes that place is pornography. Sometimes it's alcohol or drugs. Sometimes it's anger. Sometimes it can be any number of things. Maybe we become workaholics. 
There are so many things, that, uh, caves that we withdraw into when we become troubled. David ran into a cave. And as Trent just read for us in Psalm 57, I want you to look at the subscript of the title. A Mictum of David When He Fled from Saul into the Cave. When did he write this? He wrote it in a cave. He wrote it in a cave. And he cries out for mercy. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed. I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. He shall send me from heaven, excuse me, he shall send from heaven and save me. He who approaches the one who would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. In David's literal cave, he cries out for mercy. And he acknowledges that God is going to send from heaven and save him. From his mercy and from his truth. In John chapter 11, the disciples were riding high. This is not unlike our lives. Many times our lives are a roller coaster. We don't find too many of those flat places, do we? It's just up and down slow but it's normal for life Lazarus has died he's been in the tomb for four days Jesus returns with his disciples beginning in verse 38 then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb it was a cave and a stone lay against it Jesus said take away the stone Martha the sister of him who was dead said to him Lord, by this time there's a stench, for it's been in, in, he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away a stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Can you imagine? Someone they knew. This, this was not a stranger to them. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were close associates of Jesus and the disciples knew them he's dead four days later Jesus calls him out of that tomb can you imagine the disciples sitting there looking at each other going we can do anything we can accomplish anything we want to accomplish look at this he's raised somebody from the dead who's been dead for four days he's made it happen Then in chapter 12, the triumphal entry beginning in verse 12. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming sitting on a donkey's colt. The next verse says his disciples did not fully understand what was happening there. But I want you to think about this for just a moment. He has raised a man 
dead for four days. Now he's coming in, and the people are shouting, Hosanna. They're calling him the king of Israel. Can you imagine? You've been walking with this guy for three or more years. There's not a mountain peak high enough to place you upon it. And then in chapter 13, 33, excuse me, chapter 12, 31 through 34. Chapter 12, 31 through 34. Now this is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This, he said, signifying by what death he would die. The people answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Being lifted up, he was signifying the cross. But why? Why? We we just raised somebody from the dead for four days. We just had this great parade. They're calling him the king. Why is he talking about being lifted up? 13, 18 through 26, following the washing of the disciples' feet. I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, that the scripture might be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives Whomever I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about what he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus said, It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Four days dead. This incredible parade. Now he's talking about dying, and one of his inner circle is going to betray him. Verse 33, little children, I shall be with you a little longer. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come, so now I say to you. Okay, you're going to die? Somebody's going to betray you, and you're going away from us, and, and we can't go with you? 36 through 38. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I'm going, you cannot follow me, but you shall follow me afterward. Peter said, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him, will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow until you have denied me three times. And the disciples go into a cave. They were at the highest of highs. And they withdraw into a cave. They had given their lives. They had left their jobs. They had followed him wherever he went. They had seen the miracles. They had seen the dead raised, the the lepers healed, the demons dispersed. They had seen all of these things from Jesus himself. And now he's going to die. And one of us is going to betray him. And he's going to go somewhere we can't go. And Peter, the one that the others looked up to, the one who who was kind of a leader among the disciples, was going to deny him three times? Some of us have invested a lot in our jobs and our careers. Only to lose them. 
have your, your pension or your retirement taken away from you. Or right before you're vested, they decide to hire two people for the same price of what they're paying you, and they put you out to pasture. And you find yourself in a cave. We invest ourselves in our friends many times. And our friends, when, when, when things are good, our friends are great. But sometimes when things go bad, it might even be because of our friends or a particular friend. And we go into a cave. We love our children. But sometimes our children break our hearts. Sometimes they, they cause us to, to weep because they reject us or they reject God or they go off in a way in which they were not instructed. We invest a lot in our marriages. And sometimes our spouses leave us through death or through divorce and we find ourselves in a cave. And we don't understand. And our hearts are troubled. While David was in the cave, his trust was in a God of mercy. Verse 3 in chapter 57. He shall send from heaven and save me. He who reproaches the one who would swallow, excuse me, he reproaches the one who would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. He shall send from heaven and save me. God's idea of salvation is not necessarily ours in those circumstances. How he chooses to save us in the midst of trouble is not always our idea of that salvation. But I can tell you that God's idea is always the best idea. How he chooses to see you through, how he sends his mercy and his truth to pull you out of that cave is going to be the best for it always is his mercy and his truth I believe that these verses are talking about Jesus Christ I believe this this is looking way into the future and yes he is helping David as he's in that cave but I believe David being a prophet is also prophesying of one that would come from heaven and save us one who embodied the mercy and the truth of God. And so Jesus calls out to us from the uh, as we are in the cave. As he called out to his disciples and he says, Let not your heart be troubled. Why was he saying that to his disciples? Because they had withdrawn emotionally and psychologically into a cave and they were troubled they went from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows and he calls out let not your hearts be troubled you believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go to prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus says, you believe in God, believe in me. Don't focus on your circumstances. 
focus on me. That doesn't mean that you neglect your circumstances, but don't let it be all-consuming. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Because there are many dwelling places in my Father's house. If your eyes are fixed on Jesus, your eyes are going to be fixed on the place that He has gone to prepare for you. And when you're going through difficulties, regardless of the challenge, whether you've ever played sports and you know the training and the hard work that goes into it and the reward is is how you compete when you get there, whether it is seeking out a degree and you have to spend hours and sleepless nights studying and grinding and you keep looking because that sheepskin's waiting for you with your name on it. Or maybe there's that, that guy or that gal that's hard, plain hard to get. And you work really, really hard with the flowers and with the cards and with the visits and asking because you know what you could have together. Whatever it is that you are going through, you need to keep your eyes fixed on the goal so you can endure whatever hardships come in the meantime. And this life right here is terminal. We remembered our sister, Marjorie Eldred, yesterday. We remembered her, and we remembered a life that was very well lived, a life lived for Christ, not a perfect life, because none of us can live out a perfect life, but a life that was well lived in the service of our King. And folks, that is, is the end for all of us. Barring the Lord's return in our lifetime, all of us are going to die. And we've got to keep our eyes fixed as we go through this life because there are going to be troubles. There are going to be times when when Jesus says, I'm going to die. When he says, somebody's going to betray me. When he says, I'm going to leave and you can't follow with me. No, Peter's going to deny me three times we're going to hear those unsettling words whatever they may be in our life and we've got to keep our eyes fixed on a place that is prepared by jesus christ himself because he says i will come again and receive you to myself he wants to take us back to himself And he is the only way. He is the only truth. And he is the only life that's worth living. And he calls us out of that cave. Jesus and the Father are longing for us to join them in heaven. God could not do any more than he's already done to show how desperately he wants to spend eternity with you. He sent Jesus to die for you. He's provided the the manual of instruction to help us to get there. He's given us each other to encourage. And what he asked for in return is our trust and our faith. It's our trust and our faith. I want to paraphrase verses 1 through 3 in chapter 14. Do not be overwhelmed by the circumstances of this life. Rather, focus on me, my plan, and my Father's house. That is the message of Jesus to his disciples who were overwhelmed in a short period of time, by discouragement. And maybe you're in that cave today. I don't know. But Jesus calls out to you and he says, let not your heart be troubled. Don't focus on your circumstances. Focus on me. There is peace where I am. There is serenity. There is joy. 
there is love, and those things are yours in abundance with me. With me. Jesus is the answer for every problem that you have in this life. Every struggle that you have, every circumstance of life, he's the answer. We are so blessed to have a God who loves us that much. To send his son to die, to prepare a place for us. Even when we were lost in our sins, he was thinking about us and saving us. Praise God for his undying love, for his mercy, and for his endless grace. His love for us is immeasurable. And he doesn't want us to stay in that cave. He wants us to come out. He wants us to come out. And he wants us to be at peace with the circumstance in which we find ourselves. You might be dealing with a health issue today that's caused you withdrawal. You may be dealing with a relationship issue. You may be dealing with a financial hardship. You may be dealing with with sin coming back in and, and setting up shop in your life. You may be dealing with a future decision that you are struggling with. Whatever it is, give it to God. Give it to God. Trust Him. Come out of that cave. Don't withdraw. Step forward. Step one day closer to eternity in your heavenly home. If you as a Christian are here today and you need our prayers, you need our encouragement this morning, we stand ready to help you, to pray with you, to pray for you, and and to encourage you in some way. But if you're here today and you're not a Christian, you've never named the name of Christ, never put him on in baptism, I encourage you today to believe in Jesus as the Son of God. Trust in the plan of that God had in sending him here. Repent. That means to to change your way of thinking and start thinking the way God wants you to think. Embrace the sacrifice of that beautiful cross. Confess the precious name of Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And be in union with Christ, being buried in water with him, that is, baptized for the remission of your sins. You'll be raised to walk in a new life, a forgiven life, a life where you are clothed in Christ and now making your way towards that heavenly home. We're about to sing a song. The song is, Is It For Me? And I'm here to tell you it is. Once you come together, we stand and sing.